Hello everybody, it's Everall Tool 4 for another episode of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. In the last episode we went through uh, floors 31 through 50 of the Pit of 100 Trials in order to get ourselves a strange sack or whatever it was called in order to get more inventory space, which we have now. Uh, there's something I need to see though, if it's still around. Yeah, totally, look at that! Alright, so spoilers. Um. For some reason, instead of Miss Mouse, it's showing the next party member that we're gonna get. And... <laughs> and it's not showing her. Uh, this was pointed out to me in yesterday's episode. Um, or yesterday's episode, the last episode. And, yeah. It's so weird. I have no idea why it... why it's like this. Are you... no, because you're definitely supposed to be able to get Miss Mouse before Bobbery, but... We're going to be getting him in this episode, but it's so weird. I guess, maybe, like, what my thinking is, in the way this game was coded, is that Bobbery's information is coded before Miss Mouse, so, like, it's not just that, um, like, it just puts in the characters here. It's like, you know, let's say, uh, it puts the characters in numbered slots, like, Goombella is slot one, Koops is slot two, and then they just move the slot. You know, two whoever's up there, so like, uh, slot one, slot two, three, four, five, six, and then Miss Mouse would be seven or whatever. So, um, that's what I'm guessing. So, since we have six characters right now, it's just slot six over here. Uh, obviously, we don't have Bobbery in the party, but let's switch out Coops with Miss Mouse. And see if that, yeah. And now she's Miss Mouse up in up over here because it doesn't. I, I assume it like doesn't use that number. It's just again, this is all like baseless conjecture on my part. There is no factual data for me to back this up. This is just what I'm thinking off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, because uh, the characters don't have a number when they're put into the party slot, so that's why they're like that. But let's let's go back to Boko. No. And yeah, now it's, now it's back to Bobbery. Oh man, that's so weird. Uh, anyway, we're going to get Vivian out here because Vivian gets to see our fancy schmancy stuff. I, I ended the episode off over here um, because we need to do this. Yeah, if you have any explanation for why it might do that, like an actual explanation, please let me know. I would love to hear it. Whoa, we're halfway there, whoa, this is a long game. sort of island. Interesting. God, I love that effect. And yeah, the location of the crystal star has been recorded on your magical map. And now it's time for the best part. Squeaky, squeaky. Squeaky, squeaky. Squeaky, squeaky. I'm sorry. We better hurry, don't you think? We should go up to the professor's office. Because you totally know who that is. We have to let him know about the princess's email. Oh, yeah. All right. What? God, I love Frankly's theme. Well, that was uh, that was written in Princess Peach's email. I forgot the voice I gave him. Legendary treasure and actually a spirit of an ancient demon. Are those fiends want to use the power of the crystal stars to resurrect it? How bone chilling, sadly, it does seem to be consistent with what I've uncovered. What have you found out, Professor? Huh, this is rather long. She best listen well. Are all of you ready? <laughs> you there, in front of the TV. You listen up too. Yes, sir. Maybe I'm missing something. Are you talking to no one? 
Oh, never you mind! Don't worry about such trivial details, just listen. <laughs> cute, cute. The great cataclysm that I read about in that book may well refer to this demon. It says that a monster destroyed a large town that once stood on this very area. It also says that the seven crystal stars are actually created by this monster. And, and that this thing used the power of the crystal stars to try to control the world. According to this book, the demon was defeated in the end by four heroes. Of course it was four heroes, but only Beast's physical form was destroyed. Its spirit could not be eradicated. So the heroes used the crystal stars which they had stolen from the demon, and they cast the evil Beast into the depths of the vast maze and sealed the exit. From this, I gather that the crystal stars cannot distinguish good from evil. So if they're all united, they could either steal away or resurrect the demon. It seems that who wields the crystal stars determines if they're used for evil or good. I guess we ought to consider not collecting the crystal stars then. It would be awful if we found them all and to have them stolen for evil purposes. Does anyone think it might just be better to destroy them once and for all? That was my first thought too, but further research suggests we can't do that. There's a slight possibility that the thousand year door is a weakening. It seems the crystal stars hold the power to seal the beast for a thousand years. So once a thousand years pass, the power to keep the door sealed shut will fail. And unfortunately, this year may be the, south the thousandth year. Bad luck, huh? <laughs> the fact that those goons want the stars now may be a coincidence, but maybe not. In other words, we must be ready for the demon's return, even if the crosswalks fail. Oh, I guess we better find the rest of the crystal stars then, huh? Where do we start? Hmm, according to the map, it appears to be someone on, somewhere on Keel Hall Key. Keel Hall Key? I'm not too familiar with the place, but I've heard countless unsavory rumors. You know, the usual stuff, vengeful spirits, full of hatred, evil curses, things like that. I'm sure the sea salt's down by the harbor no more. You should head there first. Alright, so I guess let's go talk to the old salty sea dogs down by the harbor. Um, yeah, we've already done pretty much everything else we need to do uh, before the next chapter, aside from like talking to Luigi. But as I said, like an episode or two ago, he's on the way, so we'll, we'll get there eventually. But for now, we're going to talk to the old salts. You whole key! That's the Carson Island! We'll get mixed up with that place for your own sake! So there's like, all this stuff is here now. No matter how much I work, life never gets easier for me, you know what I mean? There's got to be a way to go poof and get rich, you know? Poof! I love that his fuse is like... Bones. Or is not his fuse, his, his little key there. Oh, you with the mustache! What's with your stink eye? You got something to say? Right, they asked me anything, I'm not gonna suck a pity on you, I'm not gonna say anything. Hello? Oh, kid, okay. Listen, mate. Don't ask me about that place, I got no need for a curse from the Pirate King. Oh gosh, the Pirate King. See that ship dock there? She belongs to Flavio, the merchant trader. He don't sail too often though, mostly things at a Podley's joint on the plaza. Oh, that's Podley, okay. Um, this ship looks important. I wonder if it will be necessary in our quest. It's almost like it, it's here only for this chapter. But technically, it's not only for this chapter. You know what I mean. Also, the, that's a satellite dish. I just realized there's just a satellite dish sticking there. Kiala, can you be the other one the treasure hoard of Cortez? The Pirate King is headed? So you want treasure, eh? Find it. Keep an eye out for the Pirate Curse, or the Pirate Curse will get ya. Well, Kiala, Kiala is absolutely awful. Not long ago, ship after ship when they're hunting treasure, but none of them ever returned. I bet they made the bad end of the Pirate King's curse. Those guys were dumb. Wow, scary. Well, a friend over there still isn't back yet. Hopefully he'll come back at some point, but yeah. Uh, Podley's is a little in place over here, so... Before we go find Flavio, because I don't want to talk to that jerk, let's talk to- Oh god, that's an angry buzzy beetle. Let's talk to Luigi. Well, I head to Circuit Break Island and got me a marvelous compass piece. You wouldn't believe it, bro. Talk about thrills, chills, spills. It was pretty nuts. All right, let's hear Circuit Break Island. Well, like I said, it's a really long story, but here goes. 
Just as our boat arrived at Circuit Break Island, we heard this incredible racket. We soon found out that they hold car races almost every day on the island. Whoever takes first place in the race gets to rule the island as king for that day. Just as we got to the racetrack, they were holding the awards ceremony. I couldn't believe my eyes right there on the trophy they gave to the winner. It was another piece of the marvelous compass. I almost passed dead away. I decided right then and there that the only thing to do is enter the next race. I like how fast Mario falls asleep. I mean, I've driven in kart races before, so I thought I'd be okay. Boy, was I wrong. The carts were supercharged machines that could send you airborne with their exhaust. These vehicles were armed with missiles and bazookas. It was anything goes, bro. What was this like? Diddy Kong Racing or Crash Team Racing? Of course, I wanted to get right out of there pronto. These drivers were crazed. But I worked on my courage and signed up anyway, and my race day finally came. I got one of the best carts, the big green one. I took my position at the start line. And the light went green, I stopped the accelerator. And something bad happened. I was in reverse, the big green one went rocketing backwards with me yelling. I crashed into the wall behind me hard enough to cut me off mid-scream. In one fell swoop I dropped into last place and wrecked my racing machine. But it wasn't all bad news, all the other carts crashed because of my maneuver. Once I got in gear and took off, I was the only car left. I won by a country mile, bro. Okay, so we're doing F-Zero Death Race now. I took the uh, piece off my trophy and added it to the Marvelous Compass. The compass came to life and pointed me towards Jazafraz Town in the east. Then I heard that voice. Princess Eclair's voice echoed in my ears again. Oh, my princess random words would form poetry if spoken by your voice. I will most definitely save you. Just wait for me, Princess Eclair! Oh, sorry about that, bro. Um, so after that, I got back on my boat and came back here to Roadport, and that's, what I, well, that's what's that's what been up with me. Wow. You want to hear what I got to say? Come around again. And what do you have to say? Yeah, I'm Tork. Now, for, don't for a second think this dude's telling the whole story. The only reason I lent him my rig is he got down on his knees and begged. And what happens? He's it for one second before he completely totals it! Idiot! I'm not letting this dip out of my sight until he repays me the 5,000 coin repair costs! Alright, Misty, alright. Um, what does Gumbel have to say? That's Luigi's pal Twerk, and here's like a totally excellent mechanic. According to Mechanics Weekly, that tool on his back can basically do anything. He seems ticked off though, I wonder what's happened. How does he fix things with that? Does he just hop on his back and start twerking around? I don't know. Can we talk to you, Podly? There we go. Welcome to you and yours. Have a seat. This is Podly's place, a humble little cola shop where folks mix stories and drinks. By the by, there's an inn upstairs. When you're weary, go up and relax. Do you do you sell um do you sell chocolate cola here? I mean, scram! Don't talk to me! My heart's burning for my long-lost love! <laughs> yes, I'm speaking of the extraordinary beauty at the juice shop in Glitzville. No matter how many times I flirted, she never paid me the slightest attention. <laughs> for a bob -ba blowing up like an ordinary throwing a punch. For a bob -ba blow it up is like throwing a punch for an ordinary bloke. If you want to leave the biggest impression, you gotta do it with perfect timing. My mom said that once you learn the timing, you're finally a dope bob Ah, oh, mom. All right, and unfortunately, finally, we have to talk to this loser. <sighs> I think I hate this guy more than any other character in the game. I think everybody does. <sighs> and what do you want? <sighs> Who? Me, you ask about? I oh, know. Aha! Flavio. Yeah, I'm called... No. Oh, what was it? Flavio is like a Italian-y... No, he's like Spanish. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be like it. The, this, this, the whole thing here is like conquistadors. I don't know. I would look it up. I'm called Flavio. I am, how you say, a trader, the richest man in Rogueport. Monetary wealth gives me freedom, yes, and freedom gives me wealth of spirit. And yet, why is it that the man whose life is unchained must always long for me yet more? Uh, uh, what is missing from my life? This tears at the very insides. I know. I must know. What do I lack? Uh, romance. Emotion. Probably thrills. Thrills, you say? Uh, I suppose one does need some thrills every now and then. 
There is nothing like this feeling of being alone on a mountain shivering to death. Ah, no, foolish Flavio, not chills, you silly man, but I need a thrills. Oh, wait, hold the horses, this is it. I'm just going to give him the stupid French voice from um, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Now that I am thinking of it, I once heard of the treasure of Cortez, the pirate king. Yes, this is the answer. All oh, such happiness. I know it's probably terribly wrong voice. I don't care. He is now the stupid French knights. All oh, such happiness for me. A hunt for pirate treasure. <laughs> Why, that just shrieks of rom romance and thrills and emotion and even money. I know it's supposed to be probably like a, sp a Spaniard or something. He's probably a Spaniard. Do you not know the tale? The pirate's king treasure. He did not kill whole key. <laughs> I'm just gonna make it as bad as possible. Well, tales say that the pirate king Cortez hid his hoard of pirate booty there. We all know booty is what's most important. For years, treasure hunters and ruffians have gone there in search of the loot. But not a single one of them has ever returned. Oh, the horror makes my back tingle. <laughs> People here whisper that the ghost of Cortez attacks all and seek his treasure. Ah! It is because of those very rumors that the people no longer go to kill all key. <sighs> but that will not stop Flavio. The treasure is there, yes, and I'm going to prove it. For I am Flavio, trader extraordinaire, millionaire, sailor of the seven seas. <laughs> oh, I hate his voice so much. I don't know why I'm still doing it. What are you saying? Are you also looking for treasure here in Rogueport? Why well, talk such craziness? There isn't anything like that in this dull armpit of a town. You cannot be believing each stupid rumor about treasure some street urchin spews out. No, 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 no! Now what madness comes bursting from your mouth? You have a treasure map? Well, well hand it over rather, I mean, show me. You are having a joke on me. This map leads straight to kill all key! You swine, you mean to steal my treasure out from under me, you awful, awful man! I hate Flavio, I hate him so much. Well, now I am confused. You are looking for things known as the Crystal Stars? But now that I am thinking, a star-shaped stone was said to be in Cortez's hoard. Perhaps I could sell it for a staggering amount of cash? Yes, that would be... Ah, stop such thoughts, Flavio. What you need is romance, thrills, and emotion. I cannot ignore what this business before me suggests. This must be fate at work. Flavio shall go with you to kill Hoki. Of course, the crystal star is yours, yes, but the rest of the treasure is mine! Okay, whatever. Huh? You must repeat that. Flavio's ears are plugged. You have no sheep? Ha 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 ha! You unfortunate, foolish man! You do not know who I am! I will have a ship ready in no time, and it will be massive and glorious! Okay, come on, splendid, splendid, splendid! Let us begin preparations immediately, shall we? I will volunteer myself as our intrepid leader, yes, and you will be captain. Ah, danger and adventure tickle my nostrils. Come to the harbor right away. Oh, he's taking a little skull thing. Alright. I guess let's go to the harbor. Oh, what a strange person. Anything different over here? No, nope, same people here. Where's the, uh... Oh, hey, there's people on the ship, hey! Uh... Right, fair weather today, yeah, perfect day to sail. If I do say so, I wouldn't mind a bit of whole journey blue in as fair as today. No sorry, Bob. Um... Hi. You're not fooling anyone. Uh, pleased to meet, uh, your acquaintance. <laughs> Uh, Gumbel, you want to help us out here? They call that guy Four- um, Wow, w what is your voice? They call that guy Four Eyes. He's one of the sailors coming for us to kill Hall Key. I totally feel like I've seen him somewhere before, though. Maybe I'm just going nuts. I don't know, you know what? I don't know. People look similar in this game anyway. Like, all the toads here are just versions of themselves. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna be filthy rich. I can't wait to leave port. Starboard, oh, board. Oh, giant monster blooper, oh, I'm practicing my hose. <laughs> Alright then. I might as well tell you, my brother went to kill and never returned. Oh, I can't, was just thinking of him, I decided to work on my car and sail there. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so it is you. Uh, sadly, a slight problem seems to have popped up, but feast your eyes on this outrageously fantastic ship. <laughs> Why do you think I have this outrageous accent? She is a fine vessel, no? She is the SS Flavion, the queen of the countless ships in my personal fleet. The royal majesty of her hull, the pomp and circumstance, none can compare to her. Ah, behold the elegant curve of her prow, she cuts to the very soul, don't you agree? But she is not just a beauty, she is a savage beast on the water, tops among sailboats. But above all, I tell you, this proud ship can... Alright, I don't care. Ah, uh, yes, did you speak? Yes, 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 of course, the problem that has sprung up. I had completely forgotten about it, the SS Flavion, she bewitches me. Yes, well, here is the issue, we have no navigator, she ran off, he ran off the dog. The navigator, of course, is the highest ranked helmsman, they steer ships, you know. Now, here is the real problem, the waters around Kiol, Kiol, deathly dangerous. We need an absurdly skilled helmsman for our navigator, it is a, how you say, a pickle. Oi, Flavio! I heard you talking there, sir, if you don't mind me saying, I have a solution. Do not tease me, Papach. <laughs> it's a babam, it's Papach. I thought it was like Paw Patch, but no, it's like Babam, Papach. You can solve our problem and spit it out. Well, sir, I've heard talk of a fame now. A legendary sailor living in Rogueport. Yeah, I think he's called Admiral Barbara. Salty old sea dog ball accounts. But he said to have Elmsman's touch, sir. He can make any ship bow to his will. Thriving is, uh, the thing is, there is, well, Thrive, I don't know, the thing is, there ain't a soul would see him on the seas of light. Boss, a boom problem solved, let us scout out this bubbery fellow and get him on board. I, I think I'm gonna change Flavio's voice because this is driving me crazy. <laughs> Boss, a boom, I don't know. As his customary, my captain will, uh, as his customary, my, can my captain will handle all negotiations, so that would be you, Mario. That does sound fair to everyone, does not. No complaints? Oh, yeah, sir. Oh, yeah, I sound fair. Oh, my boy. Good plan. Cheating. Let's decide it. You must find this Bobbery and bring him here. Our fortune sails with you. Oh, okay, let's go find this Bobbery. Uh, let's just get Boko out for the time being. So, uh, let's see. How are you supposed to know? I think. People probably tell you, um, hmm. people, people on the boat probably tell you he's somewhere like around Rogue, Rogue Port or East Rogue Port or something. There's some sort of, there's some sort of marker telling you that he's this way, but he's, he's in that house. Unfortunately, that house is locked. Wow. I pressed... X instead of A. Good job. How you doing? Hey, the hey, saw sky chopper to the roof. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about sneaking into chimneys, which unfortunately we were not able to do before. Can we make it? Yes, we are. Uh, but now that we can turn to a tube because of chapter four, we can go in here. Hello, I'm Santa. Hey, you look like uh, Miss Mouse. <laughs> what do you blokes want? Uh, honestly, like, he's got the Eggman stash. He really should have, like, an Eggman voice, but I can't do that. What do you blokes want? Hello? You say Admiral Bobbery? Never heard of the gen. Take your search elsewhere. Well, now, away with you. Can I go in here? Hey. Shine. There's nothing else in here, right? No. You seek Admiral Bobbery? No. So whatever shall we do? That's a bomb sailor. He works at the docks. Some, the workers at the docks say he's some kind of legend. I love that his like thing is a uh what's it called a uh like a helm there. I heard he was stubborn, but knew, who knew he'd give us this much trouble? Seriously, it'd be nice if Professor Frankly could tell us something about him. Oh, all right. I mean, they are next door neighbors. There's a wall in between them, but they're next door neighbors. Yo, Franks! Maybe, maybe Frankly would tell us to go there in the first place. Barry, that old sea dog lives in the east, uh, east side house right next door. They say it was a great and important sale long ago. Okay, that really doesn't help. 
Um, anyway, uh, what you're supposed to do now, again, I'm not really sure how you're supposed to figure it out. There's probably people to talk to or something, but you go to the inn. And talk to Podley. Admiral Barber, yes, yes, I know him. You know, the house that just passed the wall, yeah, that's his. I think both of you would be better off if you just let him be. Um, I, but I talked to him. Alright then. Let's talk to Bobbery again, I guess? I, I don't know. I, I, honestly, like, some of the sequence triggers in this game are, like, between chapters at least, are weird. Everyone says you're Bobbery, sir. I guess you have to talk to people. They tell you he's Bobbery. Come back and confront him. I wrote Bobbery? I have no idea, faintest idea what you're talking about now. If you please. Drop the axe, Sir Pistache. We already found out that you're Admiral Bobbery. Herf, what poppycock? Tell me what you want with me if I were this chap. Hi. You say your ship needs a navigator and you want me to do the job, hmm? So sorry, but you'll have to look elsewhere. I shall set sail upon the sea nevermore. But, but that's just not true. You want to see me bang or something? Is that it? You have to come along. Only you can get safe to the kill her key. Awfully sorry, dear boy, but I say no. I mean, what I mean is no. Oh. Okay, now I think we go back to Podley. Or something. What's the next move, Chief? The salty douche going nowhere fast. Hmm. I can't figure this guy out. What's it be for the ocean anyway? Never we all do find someone who knows what this dude's deal is. Okay. Yeah, so now we go back to Podley. Yo. You say Barbara won't go to the sea, huh? Well, I can't say that surprises me. The real question is, are you folks really sure you want Barbary back on the water? Yeah. He looks cool. Oh, is that it? Now I see. You want to mount an expedition to kill Hall Key. Rough seas out there. Most sailors would meet their ends. Not old Barbary, though. The fact of the matter is, Admiral Barbary's tale is sad. Horribly sad, actually. You'll probably end up crying, but I'll tell it to you if you really want me to. Please do. I can take it. In that case, get ready. Barbary's tale of woe goes something like this. Barbary was once married. He had a wife of enduring beauty named Scarlet. The two of them were madly in love, the sort of love reserved for fairy tales. Now, Barbary was a renowned sailor, so he was away from home for long periods. Scarlet never complained, though, and always waited faithfully for Barbary's return. And Barbary, his eye never drifted, his love oh, he loved only Scarlet, truly and deeply. So they lived and found happiness where they could. All was good for a time. But not all good things can last. It was a particularly icy winter when it happened. Scarlet fell ill. A virus? A passing cold? No one knew, but it soon, soon turned serious. Barbary at sea on a long, lonely voyage knew nothing of his bride's suffering. By the time he returned, Scarlet had succumbed. She was gone. Barbary, of course, blamed himself. My loving wife perished because of me. If I were not at sea, I could have nursed her to health. I could have saved her. He was overcome with such thoughts they tormented him, always haunting his sleep. He has never gone out to, to sea since. So sad. Gee, what's Dana? I guess that's a pretty good reason. I'm sorry, is that Yoshi talking? Gee, what a Dana. I guess it's a really pretty good reason for him, Yoshi. You all know his tale now, so tell me. Do you still want him to return to the sea? Yeah, we have no choice. <laughs> we have to get the Crystal Star, dude. Very well, I understand. If you if you are that determined, then I'll give you this. <laughs> I would love to see, like, the models, like, uh, the model of the, um, uh, counter there, like, go away, and if they just put him through the floor or something. You got an old letter. The letter Scarlet wrote to Bobbery on her deathbed. On her deathbed, Scarlet wrote Barbary a final letter. You hold it in your hands. I don't know what's written inside, but I can tell you what she told me as she lay dying. If I should succumb to this plague, and if my love should blame himself for my death, 
then give this letter to him so he may hear my voice. It was her last request. But when I saw Barbary in misery trying to forget the pain as he mourned his wife, I just couldn't bring myself to present this letter to him. I've regretted it ever since. No. Oh. Please, take this letter and do the deed I was too cowardly to do. Take it to Barbary. Listen, Padley, thanks for time. We'll deliver this thing. You feel better, okay? Let's roll, Gonzalez. All right. Um, yeah, which we're actually going to do that in the next episode. I didn't think it would take this long to uh, to get here, but uh, next time on Let's Play Paper Mario a Thousand Year Door, we are going to go uh, talk to Bobbery. New shipment the best sells Super Luigi. All right, they sell the Super Luigi. Also, um, the, the shopkeeper that's out here is gone because he's on the boat now. Sometimes I think it'd be better off not speaking. Oh, I wish I were still a pig. Aw. Oh. Yeah, next time we're gonna hopefully cheer Bobbery up and uh, you know just find some way to help him move on with his life and uh, fun times uh, will abound. Also, the timing tutor is a really fun uh, badge because it shows you when you're supposed to be able to do stylish commands. I'm not gonna put it on, but it's nice. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. Bye bye.